We know less about the ocean floor than we do about the surface of Mars. That alone should terrify you. But if it doesn't, then perhaps what lives in the deep will. Deep, great, immensely powerful arms, each with its two rows of deathly suckers. Ooh, look out! That slithering death is right on you! He'll crush your bones into jelly! Look out, boy! Look out! Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Animal Logic Second Nature. Today we're talking about going down, to the depths of the ocean floor, of course, to one of the largest and least understood habitats in the universe. Literally, 100% of the surface of Mars has been mapped, while only an estimated 20% of the ocean's floor has been mapped, and only 5% has been explored. That, despite the fact that the oceans cover 71% of the Earth's surface. That's scary. Sometimes we're afraid of big things. And sometimes we're afraid of very little ones. Remember how afraid Keith Hogan was about learning to swim? That's right. He was scared to go near the water. Yeah. We have no idea what the heck is lurking in most of the deep ocean. But from what we've seen, we know the creatures down there are weird. The deep ocean begins around 200 meters down in the twilight zone, below what's called the sunlight or the euphotic zone. Here, the light from the sun barely reaches, and the darkness comes on fast and hard as you descend. Once you hit 1,000 meters, there is no more sunlight left, and photosynthesis isn't possible. 3,000 meters underwater, so it's roughly, it's roughly eight and a half Empire State Buildings stacked end on end. That's how deep underwater we are. And I think the most abundant species is probably these small, cream collar geodia sponges, these little ball sponges. Plants that need the sun's energy to survive don't exist down here, which means that food is also more scarce. With no sunlight to warm the water, it's also cold as fuel, with temperatures hovering above freezing at just four degrees Celsius. Despite these inhospitable conditions, creatures who have adapted somehow manage to not only survive, but thrive in this dark, food poor, cold, and high pressure environment. That's pretty wild. Now this atmosphere of ours, is often used as uh, an example of lightness, lack of weight, but that isn't so. Pressure is measured in atmospheres, or ATM. On land, we experience one ATM. For every 10 meters you go down underwater, the pressure increases by one atmosphere. So if you're 100 meters below the surface of the water, you're experiencing pressure 10 times of that on land. Second, and still worse, the force exerted by the atmosphere on the surface of your body is of the order of 15 tons. All unknowing, you've been walking around under such a crushing load. We experience this as a crushing feeling because we're gas-filled beings. We need air to breathe, and even our ears have pockets of air to help us hear. And I'm not even gonna touch on the gas found in our digestive tracts. Instantly, the gas is beginning to bubble. Very violently, in fact. The difference between air-breathing creatures and those that dwell thousands of meters below is that they're made up of water, which can't be crushed by more water. Just like the pressure of air all around our bodies isn't experienced as crushing, these creatures don't even notice the immense pressure that would kill any of us in an instant. Bring them up to the surface, however, and the lack of pressure begins to cause them metabolic issues, as well as making them look absolutely ridiculous. This is what a blobfish looks like at surface level. And this is what they're supposed to look like in their deep sea habitat. This is part of the reason why it's so difficult to study these deep sea creatures, because we have to study them in their natural habitats, deep down below. And that ain't easy. The running joke among researchers is that it's easier to get to space than it is to get to the bottom of the ocean. It's not a funny joke, but it's true. The moon was seen by Galileo and by the other early astronomers to have strange dark areas upon it. And they assumed that these areas were covered with water and were like our oceans and seas. Scientists have spent 10 times longer on the moon's surface than they have at the deepest known point of the ocean, which lies almost 11 kilometers below the surface. There's a reason this point is called Challenger Deep. Even the maps of Mars we've created are better than the ones we have of what lies at the bottom of our own oceans, by a wide margin. Off into space. Man, that takes real teamwork. So, just what kind of weirdos have we encountered in our limited exploration of the deepest oceans? Let's set the scene by first taking a look at a formation of mostly glass sponges that deep sea scientists have dubbed the Forest of the Weird. This is the kind of strangeness you can expect when you descend into the depths of the ocean. 
Wow. It goes on and on, too. Every time we, we do these dives, all I can think about is, you know, this is the type of experience someone would have if they found, like, life on another planet. You know, everything's so alien to, at least for me, even though I've been doing it for five years, it's still like I'm on another planet. Yeah, and it's definitely the same for me as well, Pilot, because even though I work on these sponges, a scene like this is just extraordinary. So, first up is a real-life creature that has reached the heights of myth and legend, the giant squid. Despite the fact that the largest specimen found was almost 18 meters long, these elusive giants are extremely hard to encounter in the deep. Most of what we know of them are from dead specimens that have floated up to the surface. They've only been seen alive in their natural deep sea habitat a handful of times. In addition to being the largest invertebrates on Earth, giant squid also have the largest eye of any creature on the planet, measuring 25 centimeters across. Because of these huge peepers, where other creatures would be sightless in the depths, giant squid can see just fine. You might not believe me, but this is also a squid. It's called a big fin squid, and there are only three known species that live all throughout the deep ocean. These are the deepest dwelling squid we know of, and their long, draping arms, which are covered in tiny suckers, are thought to catch food as it floats by, or they drag along the seafloor to snatch up its snacks. All of their arms and tentacles have this long spaghetti-like extension. It's really difficult to tell the arms from the tentacles, which is very unusual for a squid. The longest big fin was recorded at 6.4 meters, or longer than a giraffe is tall. But when it comes to weird-looking creatures, nothing tops a jelly, who are common inhabitants of the very deep ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, our subject for today's discussion is fish. And what a great variety there is. One of the strangest fish is the hydromedusan, or jellyfish. They come in six delicious colors. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. This hydromedusa jelly, belonging to the genus Crisata, looks like a holiday ornament. And this orange-sized comb jelly, part of a group of jellies known as tenophores, also looks like it should be hanging from a festive tree. They're named tenophores because of their eight rows of cilia structures called tens. Not only do the tens propel the jellyfish through the water and trap and consume their prey, they also reflect light, making them shimmer and shine in the bright lights of our remotely operated deep sea vehicles. Then we have the underwater pill bug on steroids, the giant isopod. You might want to look away. This wood lice relative is usually about 30 centimeters long. They're believed to be found worldwide throughout the deep seas and are scavengers that clean up the sea floor. Considering that most isopods that are found at these depths are smaller than a human thumbnail, these giant versions are true weirdos. These are one of the most charismatic deep sea animals that you can possibly find. To some people, they're really cute. To some people, they're the stuff of nightmares. The deep sea lizardfish, like a lot of deep ocean creatures, has a face made for a horror franchise. This killing machine has the honor of being one of the deepest living apex predators and features a flat head and a mouthful of curved and barbed teeth. All that to say, they sound a lot scarier than they are, since they only reach a max size of 70 centimeters. Chimeras, the distant ancient relative of sharks and rays, are also common predators of the deep. Their spooky appearance has led to them being referred to as ghost sharks, and they can grow to be one and a half meter long specters that feed on crustaceans and mollusks. Oreo fish are true deep ocean weirdos who seem to defy the laws of fishiness by floating at odd angles near steep-sided seamounts. Oreos, which is short for fish in the Oreostomatidae family, point themselves in the direction of the current, which increases their chances of snagging a snack that floats by and enables them to hold position near the safety of nearby shelter, all while conserving energy when not feeding. Yep, I'm just gonna go upside down, check you out. I really enjoy these Oreo fish. They, they kind of look like something out of a cartoon with their giant eyes and their big mouths. You know, these Oreo fish can be a, a bit territorial, so maybe uh, this fish that really is uh, checking us out here. When it comes to deep sea freakiness, nothing comes close to the anglerfish. Looks aside, these toothy beasts are some of the most cunning hunters of the deep. They use a luminescent fin ray to attract prey, the glow of which comes from symbiotic bacteria. Once a curious fish comes too close, it'll quickly be snapped up by the anglerfish. And if you thought the anglerfish was scary, here's what scares the anglerfish. Now, anybody who hasn't a firm grip on his emotions had better not look anymore, for something's going to happen around here, and I don't mean maybe. The Atlantic midshipman, 
which buries itself in the sea floor and uses a wait and ambush hunting strategy, will make a lunch of an anglerfish before it even knows what hit it. The dotted lines of luminous photophores that go down the sides of this fish are where it gets its strange common name. Sticking with the nautical theme, these photophores resemble the buttons down the coats of young naval officers, called midshipsmen. But just because something's weird doesn't always mean it's scary. Some weird creatures are just straight up cute, like these depth-dwelling octos, which seem to be in some kind of unspoken cuteness competition. First, there's the flapjack octopus, a member of a unique group called serrate octopuses, which have webbing between their arms. In the case of this little cutie, the webbing gives it that distinct pancake shape. In addition to making them even cuter, fins on either side of their heads are the primary way of getting around, as opposed to the jet propulsion method of other octopods. Unlike other groups, serrate octopuses can't change their color or skin texture to camouflage themselves in their environment, nor do they have ink. Finger-like projections on their arms help them locate yummy morsels, like worms and other small invertebrates on the sea floor. To stir up some snacks, the flapjack octopus will flap its arms to disturb the sediment on the bottom. So without the ability to camouflage, how do these creatures avoid detection? In the deep ocean, they don't need camo, as they can hide in plain sight. While they stand out to our eyes when we shine a light on their reddish-orange bodies, without the red wavelengths of visible light, these colors actually make them almost imperceptible to predators, like sharks, whales, fish, and fur seals in the dark of the deep ocean. Well, let's call this fellow names, too. He deserves to be sworn at. You old cephalopod, that's you. Octopus punctatus, accent on the punk. Next up on the list of deep sea octocuties, we have the so dubbed Casper octopus. The ghostly appearance of this all white octopus is what earned it its name. What stands out about this short armed octopus is that it was found at more than 4,000 meters below the surface. So far, the only octopuses we've ever observed this deep are finned octopuses of the Serrata suborder, like the flapjack. So far, this one hasn't even been scientifically classified, since we only know it from images and not from specimens. Maybe someday we'll have a real binomial name for this deep sea darling. We can't talk about the deep's cutest octopuses without mentioning the Dumbo octopus, another group of serrate octopods that are seriously adorable. The Grimpetuthus genus of so far 17 species is nicknamed Dumbo because of their large flapping fins located above their eyes that look like an elephant's ears. These cuties are assumed to live around the globe and have been observed as deep as 7,000 meters, making these the deepest dwelling mollusks that we've ever encountered. Whether it's terrifying or adorable, the whole range of weirdness can be found deep down in our very own oceans. If this is just 5% of what we've discovered, imagine the weird that is lurking in the other 95%. Basically, the world's life support system is dependent on the ocean, right? A lot of people don't realize that every other breath we take is because of the ocean. All these efforts are to really sort of shine a light on what a wonderful and amazing place the, the ocean is, including the deep sea, and bring that home. This is our home planet, and we need to understand what's out there. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Bye! In case you missed it, Animal Logic has launched a channel membership program. It's the easiest way to support the channel and help us keep bringing you original nature content. If you become an Animal Logic superfan, you'll get priority replies to all your comments, photos, and status updates when we're out in the field. Scene one, take one. Discounted merch from our spring store, Danielle's art from the show as well as Animal Logic exclusive emojis and loyalty badges. There's also a few exciting new perks in the works. So if you like the channel and want to support us and be part of Animal Logic, please become a member by clicking the join button below. Thanks so much, and I hope you enjoyed the episode.